It's very soft. Mm -hmm. No? It has a little bit of spice. Tiny bit. You want it? I want it, yeah. yeah. I want it. Mm. Wow, bro. Wow. No, no, it's really, really amazing. Like, it's amazing. I told you you're gonna love it. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful cold Halitzor Resort in Armenia. This is in Southeast Armenia and right now we're literally looking over a gorge. This is incredible. It's an eco-friendly resort so it's like cottages slash there's like these wooden like wooden barrel cottages as well. Yeah, really, really beautiful. And so Lucina, what are we doing today? Today we are going to visit a very special spiritual and educational center in Armenia, one of the most important educational centers from ancient times. And we are going to come back by a reversal cable car, which is the longest in the world, by the way. You're gonna like it. Longest? And yes. Wow, okay. And the end of the trip, uh, we will have a local lunch, traditional lunch. Perfect. Right here we have some cheese, we have some eggs, and we have the lavash. This is all traditional breakfast and <laughs> we have a lot of guests coming in here now but it's all good. So this is how you do it, right? Traditional breakfast. Just, oh, and jam and butter. And butter, but this is not for you. This is, that's not for me. <laughs> you want me a bite? Your morning coffee, David. Thank you. Let's get a big piece of cheese like that. So that's how I do it, but you know, some of the people, some people like to eat the eggs. Today I'm just gonna go with some of the jam. So jam, cheese, this is how they eat, you know, making like little sandwiches always with the bread, the lavash. Just go in, fold it up, make like your own little taco burrito. Mm. Sweet and salty. That's good. Another big piece right there. Some jam on top. Oh, this jam, this apricot jam. Oh, it's so sweet. Mixed with the saltiness of the cheese. I mix it, yeah, it's so good like this. Too much? Wow. <laughs> That's how you crack your egg in Armenia. <laughs> yeah, here in Armenia, they have some of the darkest coffee. Like, really dark. Everybody has it like this, right? This really is a beautiful eco resort right on the side of the gorge. I mean, it feels like you're camping out here, but a little more luxurious, obviously. It's not like tents. And yeah, there's multiple different types of rooms. There's one that's like a barrel. Really, really beautiful. I, I really love that one. I mean, hopefully next time I come, I'll stay there. And then we stay in this like big one, which is like a, it's more like a cottage. You know, there's like three rooms, two bathrooms, a living room. And yeah, I mean, amazing, amazing up here. I love how cold it is. It's really, really enjoyable. I mean, I feel like I'm in, like in Switzerland, like in the Alps, but not obviously at the top because there it gets really cold and lots of snow. Here they get snow as well. Southeast Armenia is actually really cold in comparison to the north. I mean, it's, it's, it's it just depends because the elevation, right? But yeah, guys, I mean, I highly recommend staying here, stay here for a night, two nights, and then go explore everything we're about to explore. Are you guys ready? Let's go to the monastery. The 9th century monastery we're going to is only a 20 minute drive from the resort. As you can see, we're literally going around the gorge. You can actually see it from here. It's right across from us. And we're like literally just like stuck to the mountain, the side of the mountain, it's going up and down and around. I mean, right now we're just descending and then we will again ascend on the other side. Wow, look at this, the mountains. Yeah, th this area is beautiful. It's, beautiful. it's like. Region. It's and what's the name of this region, by the way? This is Sunik region, and we always say if you came to Armenia and skip Tateb, it means you haven't seen Armenia. Yeah? Yes. This monastery? Yes. Wow. This monastery, this area, this gorge, anything you find around. After a quick 20 minute drive, we are here. Tatav Monastery. Wow. With the light, it looks so medieval right now. Beautiful. Like the light and everything right now, incredible. As soon as we approach the monastery, you notice it resembles a fortress, huge walls. You have two towers and then you have the main gate. Now, was this a fortress? This was a fortress with the watchtowers, as you noticed. And uh, while you are entering uh, the 
gates uh, right in front of you you can see St. Peter's and Paul's Church from 9th century because they named it so because some relics of St. Peter and Paul uh, were under the columns we have inside the church but the complex is quite big actually we have the school area we have refectory residential part we have refectory another little chapel on one of the entrances and a very interesting column I will tell you about it after as soon as we enter through the main gate you'll see the church in front of you and then over here to the right we have some men working they're reconstructing the property doing a great job because over here this is all restored wow look so you have the, the main gate then we have a spring here yes this is one of the main water sources of the monastery wow so fresh so cold mm. You sure I can drink from there? Yes. <laughs> Here we have another church, little one. It's from 11th century. It's also restored. So we can actually climb to the top of the 11th century church. Right next to it, there's a staircase. And here we go. This was under restoration a long time and they just opened it. And we can go and have a look how it's. You know, it's a little cozy church. We used to have this kind of a church. This is like a church for one person. You just go in your prayers and get out yeah I've noticed that a few of the medieval churches I've visited have very small churches or the monasteries have very small churches and this one has the same thing you'll find in most of them right the cross the blooming cross all over so carved into the church and wow it really is like a medieval church you can feel it you recognize this corner? oh yeah so they did this for the earthquake right yes this is tiny it's a one person you just come here and pray to God and that's it yeah. Wow. This is, this is the, probably the smallest church I've ever been to. Right on the walls of the church, you can see inscriptions in Armenian. This is like old school Armenian, and basically this is like contracts, the history of the church. You'll find that in every church. And then, wow, look at this view. Incredible view over the gorge. And over here, the wall has been like destroyed. So, so this place has been like destroyed a few times. I'm sure it's gone through a lot. Yes, this place has gone through a lot. It was... Uh, uh, overcame different attacks and reconstructed uh, every time and had a revival every time so in the beginning of 20th century imagine it was even one of the centers of Armenian liberation movement and then it was shattered immediately of the Soviets and then uh, after the earthquake in 1931 it was damaged very badly and was abandoned and the re-blessing of the monastery we had in 1990s and till today we continue the restoration of the complex wow so it's, it's taking a long time obviously it's, yes, slowly it has a long life experience <laughs> <laughs> and this is probably the best view of saint paul and peter's church let's go explore that i really want to see it so we can't see relics because they're under pillar. They are under the t uh, um, columns. Under columns, okay. Under the columns, but we can see the grave of uh, Datevati, who was the leader of the monastery. We entered the church through Belfry, which is from 14th century. And by the way, we have original bells from that period. They are still functioning. So this is the original bell right here. As you see, I mean, these you know, two main columns. Then you enter the church. Wow, so this is all original, 14th century? This is 14th century, this is original. In all the churches in the monasteries, you always have to take off your hat and then women cover their head, correct? Yes. And then here, as you can see, this is really medieval. I mean, you could tell by the light. It almost feels Gothic. I know it's not Gothic, but it has like the same like sense, you know, especially the time period. All the walls were covered with frescoes and it's so interesting. You find some sources where they say for creation of the frescoes in Tata, French students participated. So it means there might be, you know, um, student scholarships or exchange programs because monasteries as universities in Armenia were really very developed. This is a grave of Grigor Tatevatsi, who was the main scholar of this monastery and during his leadership of the monastery as a university. Imagine the university like owned 600 villages, 600 villages actually paying taxes to the monastery. And they were investing all the taxes in the creation of manuscripts. So basically they were like the biggest landlords in the area. They owned 600 villages, they were making a lot of money, so they were investing in the manuscripts and building the monastery. 
we're going to see the residential area all these uh, in here actually we have also the library that have monastery had a library of 10,000 manuscripts by the way medieval living here can you imagine no electricity no Wi-Fi <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Bishop residential area, and unfortunately the 10,000 manuscripts you were talking about were all lost in one day in the 12th century when who invaded? Seljuk Turks. Okay, and they came here and they just burned them all? Yeah. Wow. This was the disaster for the monastery. I mean, that's, that's history though. In history, people destroyed things, burned things. That's why I started writing on walls, so that it's always there. Exactly. It, never, it can never be exactly. lost. We started to leave the history on the walls of the churches. That's why you find a lot of inscriptions. Wow, what a view. Oh, every time I'm coming here, I admire it. Recently, we learned about pre-Christian secrets of Datev, and one of the secret keys is this column you see right in front of you. And imagine this column shows us the Orion Belt, which was very important at that at very ancient times, pre-Christian times, like thousands of years ago. People used to worship Orion Belt and they were orientating in time with the help of Orion Belt. So every August 11 at night, Orion Belt stars rise up. They are like, it's a born of Orion Belt and they rise up on the top of this column. Like this column shows where to look to see the Orion Belt. And this is the only place in the world where you can see Orion Belt when they are born, just born in a straight line. Like one, two, three with a straight line and then the column is coming. And that's basically the new year in ancient times. Eventually it was changed to January 1st, but we won't get into that. Now we're gonna cast the cable car down. It leaves every 15 minutes. <laughs> it's 10, 13, it leaves in two minutes. Hopefully we'll make it. <laughs> Luckily, we bought tickets already. <laughs> oh, it's right here. Hey, guys. Hi. We made it. We made it. We're just waiting to get our tickets, and we're gonna get on. It's literally 10, 15 on the dot. The night is way too long. We're in, we're in. Wow. That was, that was intense. Oh my god. $11 one way, $15 round trip. This is really incredible. The views are so amazing. And she was actually telling me that usually it's packed. Usually there's like 30 people here. So definitely come early. We got there right when it opened at 10 in the morning. Actually nine in the morning we got there. 10 a.m. this starts. So you really, 10 a.m. people can actually take it up. So get here early, right? And they can get it earlier than 10 a.m. They are taking it up, and on the way back, we just also can take it 10 a.m. It's 15 minutes fly, it's 5.7 kilometers, and the deepest part is 320 meters. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, yeah, there we go. Whoa, Whoa hold on to something. I thought it was ending here. No, no it just keeps going. Wow, another one is coming. Another one's coming? Yes. Hold on to something. We actually stayed right near here. We drove 20 minutes that way, but this is actually 20 minutes the other way, yeah. roughly. So our driver actually had to go from the monastery all the way back and then all the way to the end to pick us up. I mean, this is worth it though. I suggest, I really suggest taking this all the way and then coming back with it. But if you really don't have that much time, you know, get there earlier. The monastery opens at nine in the morning. This opens at 10, so you like lose an hour. So get there earlier and take it back if you can. I mean, this is incredible. This is one of my favorite experiences so far. Yeah. Just because I mean, yeah, it's like a wow factor, you know? Hello. 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 <laughs> thank you, thank you, I'm bye. Waiting. That was amazing. Only 15 minutes, there was only five of us, and look at the group that's going in. Huge group, 30 people. So when I told you we are really lucky to be just few of us, <laughs> now you can believe me, now you can trust me what I was talking about. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been in Finicure like this with a lot of people and I was in the middle and I can't see anything. The wings of Tata go 16 kilometers per hour, takes 12 minutes, so it's a little less than what we said. We said 15 minutes, but it's 12, but it goes every 15 minutes. It depends on if there is a wind, it will take uh, 15 minutes. If there is a really strong wind, it will take a little bit longer, just like, but the best is 12 minutes. Okay, and what does this mean? It means that a single cable of the wings of Tata weighs as much as 10 African bush elephants. Now we have a 90 minute drive to lunch? Yes. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. So we're going to wear Arani. Well, we are going to Arani, but on the way we will stop at the food court 
this is one of the best places on the way to Arani to have a short break and continue our trip. We're currently driving through the Sunik region and as you can see a lot of rolling hills, very dry, a little cold. I see a lot of farmers, we've seen a lot of sheep, cows and yeah I mean that's basically it. It's just like a lot of hills, not really mountains, more like rocky hills, a lot of dry grass and where, where's the next region we're going to? Next region we are about to enter is Vyoza region. Vyoza region is famous for its narrow gorges like canyons and rocks and also mountaineer goats and mufflons. The one thing you'll notice really fast here in Armenia is how quickly the landscape changes. Everywhere I've been it's been different. Dilijan, you have the forest, then we went to Artsakh and that was like mountains. We came over here, a little more mountains, colder and then hills. So I mean, it just keeps changing. It feels like different seasons almost, yeah. you know? Yeah. During one trip, you can go from summer to winter through eight climate zones, it's possible. We are already in the Vyoza region and you can notice the rocks, narrow gorges I described it before and they are full of mountain gods, by the way. Incredible how the landscape changed so drastically. Mm. We're up in the hills, in the mountains, came down and now we're in like squeezing through. Just literally yeah. cut. So did they cut this? Have more narrow. Yeah, we're uh, super narrow. More narrow. Even more narrow than yes. this? Yes. Wow, this is nice. Food court. This is one of the best spots to stop on the way. So let's go and we have some good, full of flavor salads. And the most important, the key of this area is going to be a beef kebab. Beef kebab? Yes. <laughs> I love this place. Very modern, very sleek. Yeah. It's surprising it's very modern, right? Like on the way of yeah, yeah. some abandoned areas. But this is bike town actually. Okay. Yeah. And so this good. Is one of the good spots on the way from Tatev to Noravan, by the way. So it's a it's a buffet and they have kebabs over here. They have everything over there. They have barbecues, they have potatoes, they have chicken, a lot of stuff actually. And here we have some salads, we have pizza in here. So some we call them karkandak. Different stuff with different kind so of So these are pies? These are Great. like pies. Yeah, this is like for us, this is more like an so empanada, so samosa, potatoes. but it's baked. They're baked, right? Yeah, it's baked. Great. Wow, the food is phenomenal. What are we gonna eat? A mix of everything? We mix everything. Okay, <laughs> let's see. I'm really, really hungry. No, I'm hungry. <laughs> so here at this food court, you have breads, you have pizza, you have kebabs, you have salads. And what we're doing is we're going, obviously, with the beef kebabs. They look amazing. I can't wait to eat that. And then we're also gonna get some salads. So what salads do you recommend? Just, get, just go all out with anything you want. I mean, everything that's traditional Armenian is what yeah, you get. Yeah, we will take little by little from everything to try and you will see how they are tasting. <laughs> Alright guys, here we go. We have so many different things, but we're gonna start off with the beef kebab. Wow, this looks incredible. We just saw him roll it, and he added a bunch of stuff. I went all out, I got like everything. Mm. I love the sauce. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of spice. Tiny bit. You wanted it? I wanted, yeah, yeah. I wanted. Mm. Wow, bro. Wow. No, no, it's really, really amazing. Like, it's amazing. I told you you're gonna love it. It's spicy, but it's so tasty. Mm. It's like a yogurt drink, right? It's a matsuni juice. Matsuni juice. Yeah. It will. It will make you feel better after spicy food. Exactly. Yeah, this yeah. is like in India. They always give you something like this, like a yogurt drink, mm -hmm. right after spice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good though. Really, really fresh. Yeah. Kori they do it here. Uh, we call it right some, Yeah, it's not wow. from the shop. They do it here. Oh, it's delicious. It's like a super watered down, I, I'd say like yogurt. Watered yeah, down yogurt. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, next up I'm gonna try some of the this like roasted vegetables salad. You can find it all over Armenia. I really love it because the eggplant like dominates the flavor. Mm. Ooh, which one you try? The eggplant? The eggplant. <laughs> she can't handle the heat, so get out of the kitchen. 
That plant's phenomenal. Yeah. Too good. I'm gonna also try some of this. This is the carrots, right? Just straight mm -hmm. carrots. Wow. Mmm. It's like oil and pepper. That's what it is. And then here we have beet salad. Beets and peas. Everything is super refreshing. You know, especially on a hot days, it would be perfect. Mm -hmm. and it's so healthy. Mmm. The red beans. They are popular, you see? Mmm. Yeah. It's like red beans, eggplant, and lots of lamb and meat. Yeah. And less spices. Mm -hmm. We use less spices so you can feel the real flavor of the food. Mm -hmm. Everything's very organic. It's like zero spice. Just straight farm to table. That's what I love Armenia. It's like really, really mm, Maximum healing. salt, red pepper and some black pepper. Some this greens. is what we usually do. And sometimes mm -hmm. greens. Mm -hmm. Just fresh greens on the top. Just fresh greens. Yeah. I mean, everything here was really good. But my favorite, definitely be a kebab. Kebab, yeah, kebab is nice. Mm -hmm. All right guys, so that is our morning. We had such an exciting day. We woke up in an incredible gorge at that eco resort. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> From our view, it was like so impressive, so beautiful. We had some quick breakfast. Then we went to Tatev Monastery, the most important monastery in Armenia. One of the most. One of the most. Well, it was a university during the 14th century, right? Yeah, and it was a very special educational center with its manuscript, with its heritage. And then we had the beautiful fly. Yeah, the cable car, the cable car. <laughs> cable car. The, the world, it holds the Guinness World Record for the longest Reversal. reverse cable car. Okay, really amazing. <laughs> that was an experience on its own. I, that was actually for me the highlight over the monastery. Unfortunately, <laughs> I just I just enjoy it. I mean, I love being up there enjoying the views and then after that we came here We had such an incredible meal. I can't even tell you how good that kebab was. I mean mouth-watering every bite I just wanted more if I could eat the second one I would but I can't unfortunately because festival is waiting for yeah. <laughs> And guys if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Armenia. Peace